we would, you know, start by talking about types of public funding available to homeschooling families with special needs children. Um, and then why these programs are so different from state to state, because a lot of times parents will come onto social media and they'll say, this is what I get for my district or my state. And, and then another parent would say, well, I, I tried to get that, but I can't. And, right. and so, um, what is, you know, what have you, what is the spectrum? And then sure. why is the spectrum so broad? <laughs> right. Well, first of all, um, it, it, it can be very, very confusing. And one of the things that I would certainly encourage parents, if they haven't already checked out uh, the HSLD uh, website, you can go to www.hslda.org. And we have not only the state laws, what's required for your state to be able to homeschool, but we also have you know, what you uh, may be able to get as a child or have a, a parent with a child who has special educational needs. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing that I would say is, you know, every homeschooling family, uh, really in any child who's school age, um, and, and that would uh, generally be in the public school uh, anywhere from uh, five to 21, uh, you can have your child be evaluated to determine whether or not they have special educational needs. Now, right. uh, we may talk a little bit later whether that's a, a, a good decision, but everyone has yes, the right to an evaluation. To uh -huh. <laughs> and um, so, so anyone can get that evaluation. And normally the way in which you would initiate that is you submit a written uh, request to have the school district evaluate child for special educational needs. Mm -hmm. They have to act under federal law within 60 days yes. to conduct that evaluation. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, COVID has kind of modified how they're it, they're yeah, conducting some of these evaluations, mm -hmm. but um, everyone is entitled to an, an evaluation that's uh, free, no cost. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it may be more extensive than what you're thinking, though, because they don't necessarily going to focus on, you already may know, say your child is struggling yeah. with dyslexia, or perhaps uh, your child has a, a you know, comprehensive issue, or, or you know they're on the mm -hmm. autism spectrum. Right. Uh, typically, though, the evaluations are going to be uh, comprehensive, uh, evaluation all across mm -hmm. um, the wide range of yeah. potential disabilities, um, and then they will determine whether or not your child is identified as having a disability. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is where it kind of gets interesting because each state is different and they treat uh, students differently. Everyone is entitled to a free, appropriate public education. Mm -hmm. So everyone can yes. send their child to, to, to school. Unfortunately, you know, all the public education across the country is not always going to be the same, mm -hmm. but uh, you're entitled to a free appropriate public education. When you choose a private education, whether a traditional private school or a mm -hmm. homeschool program, uh, then that's where it kind of starts to uh, differentiate. And most states provide yeah. a, a lower level of services for non-public school students. Mm -hmm. um, each state gets to determine whether they categorize homeschooling in a non-public school kind of category. Oh, okay. um, and it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there, there are about 16 states that you are treated as a private school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so like California, Kentucky, Texas, yeah. okay. um, mm -hmm. many of those states will treat you as a private school when you're homeschooling. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in most of those states, you're going to be potentially entitled to some services if your child is identified as having a disability. Right. And then there are a number of homeschool states where you're under a homeschool statute. Uh, you're still homeschooling when you're, um, you know, considered a private school student in those states right. that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. But in a in a homeschool state, there are uh, several states that also provide services for homeschool students, like New York um, okay. and, and other states. So about half of the states will provide some level of services if your child is identified. Mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing a slight increase in that. Um, right. what, one of the things yeah. that I would certainly encourage you, like I said earlier, is to check out the HSL Day website. We can give you some insight as to what potential services you could be entitled to mm -hmm. um, as a homeschool student and those services from the public school system. Um, again, I think we'll talk a little bit later on about whether that you know may or may not be the best decision for you and your family, mm -hmm. right. but um, that's one option. There are also then a number of states who've kind of set up, and I know you talked about this in your previous uh, podcast yeah, and broadcast, mm -hmm. that uh, you have a number of states who are, are kind of doing a, a kind of like a scholarship, mm -hmm. or sometimes they call it a savings account. Yeah. Um, and most of these are 
uh, specifically focused on children with special edu- educational needs. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them also include uh, maybe children who, uh, military family or yes. other mm-hmm. other ways in which they can qualify for that same educational program. Yeah. And, and the, the general um, setup of these programs are they use public funds that's mm-hmm. deposited into, into account and those funds then can be used for approved um, services or approved providers. Um, and then they could also be used for um, other things like curriculum or mm-hmm. other uh, programs, therapies, and things like that. Right. Uh, but again, because it's public funds, mm-hmm. uh, you typically have to follow certain requirements and, mm-hmm. and oversight. Yeah. Some states actually have this, the the Department of Education managing those accounts. Okay. Uh, then there are states like Florida with the Family Empowerment Scholarship. Right. I think you mentioned that last week, but yep. those are actually managed by third party yes. uh, organizations. Mm-hmm. So again, there's a wide range. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have yet other options <laughs> of public mm-hmm. funds. And those would be um, some of the like charter school or virtual mm-hmm. school options. Right. Yep. Um, and some of these, um, you know, they'll provide both education and some services. Mm-hmm. Your child is is still considered a private school. I'm sorry, a, a public school student. Public school, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you may be, they may be educating in your home. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it, sometimes it's very difficult for parents to, you know, w- well, whether this is a publicly funded program right. or a privately funded program. Mm-hmm. Um, there are very few uh, private uh, programs that uh, you know would would kind of provide the uh, you know the, the level of funding that you're going to find. 